Well, another episode of Jay Lone's Garage. This is a product segment. You know, reading the comments, uh, a lot of people want to know what vendors we use for different products. And Tremec is one of our favorites. They build fantastic transmissions. And these can go in almost any vehicle. As you can see, if you've watched uh, my website over the years, we, you see we always use Tremec products and everything from my, from my 32 Ford to, uh, to uh, well, the 70 Challenger, uh, our Ford 7 liter, most recently, the Daimler Dart. Here's that. Here's the chassis with the Tremec. But let's meet Nate Tobin. De Nate, come on in. Now, you're, what is your title at Tremec? <laughs> I'm the Enthusiast Marketing Director. Enthusiast yeah, Marketing yeah. Director. I work on our aftermarket side. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I imagine hot routers must call you every day. Uh, yeah, get a fair amount of calls. Um, you know, a lot of guys just kind of want to know what they can do to get one of our transmissions into their, their vehicle. Uh, I mean, as you know, we were talking about your Hellcat a little bit earlier. It's got one of our factory right. transmissions, the TR6060. And Tremex are pretty much standard in Chrysler, Ford, GM, right? Even McLaren and Ferrari use them. Tremec. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the McLaren and Ferrari is our like our high-end DCT type of stuff, mm -hmm. uh, mechatronics division. Uh, most people know us from the. Um, uh, like you said, the, the Ford GM, the big three stuff. Right. Uh, so, so the Shelby GT500 and even the new GT350, the V8 variants of the Camaro, Challenger, even your CTSV has one of yeah. our transmissions. Well, you know, back in the day, uh, the 60s and 70s, you kind of spent your life going through junkyards trying to find old four-speed transmissions right. or right. whatever it might be, or right. Cadillac LaSalle if you're going back even further hot rodding. I mean, it's just great that you have transmissions that can take the kind of power that modern cars are putting out. Uh, this is the one we use in our Daimler. Tell us about this model. Well, this, this is our TKO 5-speed. This is the one that people perhaps know us best for. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the TKO is originally known as the 3550, gained a lot of traction in the, uh, the 50 Fox Body performance movement, you know, when, when performance really started coming back, a right. uh, few injected stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, GM guys started retrofitting these in their early muscle cars. So essentially what you get is a close ratio of four speed. You can go, you know, hammer the gears on, have some fun with, and then you get a nice deep overdrive so you can throw it, you know, in overdrive, cruise down the highway. It's got a lot of flexibility features. Uh, you know, you can have the shifter mounted here, here, or even here in right. the case like your Challenger. Um, you can use a mechanical or an electric Speedo pickup. Uh, uses the old GM and Ford style uh, bolt patterns for the bell housing. So it's really meant to be you know, application flexible. Now, do you guys have like, uh, like an 800 number? Let's say I'm working on a project and I want to know if your transmission will work behind my engine or if it'll take the kind of power. Can they call you guys? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, we've got an 800 number, 800-401-9866. Right. Takes you directly to our customer service guys in Southeast Michigan. Uh, we're strategically located out there to, to serve our No, you actually get customers. to talk to someone. Is it one of those, press one. No, no, no. <laughs> that's press two if you feel you need more performance. No, no. You can, you'll get somebody that uh, uh, you know, knows transmissions. You get connected right. right to them. They can speak English and the whole bit. So. I mean, that's the greatest thing about this stuff. You just drop it in. It's like crate engines, you know. Crate engines are a fairly new phenomenon in hot riding where everything is perfect. You just drop it in and it goes. Absolutely. And this, you know, is going to work. What do these transmissions sell for? Now, the retail, you're going to pay about $2,400 for okay. one of the TKOs. I mean, and it kind of depends. I mean, if something like this is, it depends on what sort of application, you know, from, from a space standpoint, what do you need for, for torque capacity? This will support up to 600 foot-pounds. RPM-wise, how hard do you plan on shifting, you know? Right. Uh, the TKO is good for about 6,300 RPM. Now, $2,400 is not inexpensive, but go somewhere, buy a used transmission for four or 500 bucks, finagle with it, put it in, then when you have problems, see if this really isn't the better deal. I right. mean, that's the nice thing about it. You got something that works perfectly. I mean, when we put this in my Daimler Dart, oh, it just makes shifting so nice. It makes you really enjoy Thank the you. transmission. Uh, now, this is the heavy-duty model, right? This is a little bigger? The, the Magnum 6-speed, yeah. Right. I mean, in, in some ways, it's, it's kind of an apples to oranges comparison. The, the Magnum, where I, I sort of refer to as our TKO as being like a utilitarian brute, uh, you know, it, it, it's a great cruising transmission. Uh, the Magnum steps things up. This is actually an aftermarket version of the TR6060, again, okay. like what's in your Hellcat or your, your CTSV. Um, so, what we do in the aftermarket side is try and make them a little bit more application friendly. You know, we put the different shifter locations in it again and the different speedometer pickups. You got an electric on our side, a mechanical on the other, the old Ford style pencil gear plums into that. Okay. Um, but this one uses, this is an end loader design. So it's a little bit, it's, it's stronger in design than, than the, uh, the old school top loader like the TKO is. And it uses the, the bigger pattern on the front, like the T56 style pattern. And like you were saying, a lot of guys will go and try and pull one out of a junkyard 
you know, from an OE application, which is, which is great. I completely right. can appreciate having to work on a budget. Um, but in a lot of cases, you know, they're, they're, not, they're intended for that OE application that right. they yanked them from. And you don't know where it's from. By the time you get done rebuilding it and yada, 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 you could... And what do you headache. run for transmission loop? What do you run in these? Just ATF. Yep. Oh, just ATF? Dextron ATF, yep. Wow. That's, I would have thought... The, you know, MTL or something right, a little bit different. Right, a lot of people do, but a manual transmission, if you're, if you're familiar with the way, you know, a synchronizer pushes forward on a gear, uh -huh. all right, um, basically it, it's acting like a wet clutch. You have to evacuate the fluid out of that space. So a thinner fluid will, will translate into a, a crisper, faster shift activity. Well, that makes sense. But it'll also translate more noise. A thicker fluid will slow down that shift activity, but will dampen some of the noise and vibration. So you're looking for something in the middle, and we find that just... Regular Dexmark ATF does the job. Mobile wow. One Synthetic, if you're feeling fancy. Now, how about uh, changing your transmission fluid? Because most people, you know, it's one of those things people just completely forget about. I had a friend of mine, she bought a Jaguar, and she brought it to a dealer, and it, it wasn't shifting, and the dealer wanted $8,000 for a new transmission. And I told her, go to the transmission shop, have them clean the filter, the screen. Mm -hmm. The car had 45,000 miles on And then it was shifting perfectly, right. you know, because that was an automatic transmission. Right. But with the manual, is it, how important is it and how often should you change the fluid? Well, every, that's you know one of those things where everybody has their own preferences mm -hmm. there. When they come from the factory, they are fill for life. Okay. Uh, you know, I make a habit out of changing my fluids usually every couple of years. I okay. mean, I only put maybe 15,000 miles a year on my, my weekend car. Right, right. But, uh, uh, you know, that said, it, it really depends on the customer. And, and I'd say that's, that's sort of relative based on how hard you're using it, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously, if you're getting a lot of track use where the fluid's getting hot, it's probably more important to change the fluid more frequently. Okay. Yeah, but for your normal cruiser, you, you don't got to worry about it too much. I mean, it really is sealed. I know BMW has some transmission now that is sealed for life. You can't even, you can't open them. Right. Yeah. Well, they, a lot of times they don't want people messing with them. And, and, and actually going back to the point you discussed earlier, uh, you know, like ZF. That's nothing, nothing against some of our, our peers and or competitors out right. there. But one of the differences with the Tremec is that you can get service parts and, and you know, things to support them. Our, mm -hmm. our distributors basically, you know, for us, we manufacture the new assembly from raw steel you know, into a finished product. But our distributors are the ones who pair them up with the custom peripherals, right. like the kit for your Challenger. Right, right. So you don't make bell housings or anything like that? No, we have a limited selection of bell housings okay. for really popular applications. But for the most part, you know, there's, uh, there's other guys out there, um, QuickTime. We used in your seven liter, right? right? Uh, and and QuickTime makes a bell housing to adapt a Tremec to dang near anything you can think of, right. except maybe a Daimler. Yeah. <laughs> now, what's coming in the future? You know, we you know Chevy's got a seven speed. You think we'll see seven or eight speed manuals ever? It's possible. I mean, today our, our seven speed that we're uh, doing for the the Corvette program is a triple overdrive. Right. Not a lot of vehicles with the you know the weight, power, aero that can actually take advantage of something right. like that. Um, but uh, we do have uh, some more modern offerings, even in the Magnum line, where we do, we call it the Magnum XL. It's a, an extended length version of it, and it's for right. more late model applications that have the shifter hanging really far back, um, like your newer Challenger, the new Mustangs, Camaros. Because obviously, the smaller the gear, uh, the less power it can take. Is true. That, is that yes. pretty true? Yep. So, yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, there's a lot of different factors that dictate how much torque a transmission can support. Uh, certainly, the face width on the gear is, is uh, uh, one of the the more important key factors there. Center distance is also one. Um, this is an, what we refer to as an 83 millimeter box, meaning the center of the main shaft to the center of the counter shaft, that distance is 83 millimeters. Obviously, larger gear, larger center distance. For reference's sake, our six-speed lineup is an 85 millimeter center distance. Okay. It sounds small, but it's, it's big. Here's a question. Uh, for the guy on a budget, does Tremec ever do rebuilt gearboxes, that kind of thing? We don't, but we have, a, I mean, we have distributors all across yeah, the country yeah. who do, and the service parts are available. Okay. Yeah. Well, pretty cool. Well, there you have it right there. As you see, we've had tremendous success with it, and uh, we couldn't be happier with these. Thank you very much. My Nate pleasure, terrific. Jay. Really My good. pleasure. So Thanks check for out the me. website. And call that hotline. See, make sure you don't get that press one for a slipping clutch, plus two. <laughs> or, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Don't, don't stand for that. Mm-hmm. <laughs>